welcome to the wonderful world of alliums and uh, we're going to have a look at um, some of our favorite varieties here in the uk uh, varieties of this family of of bulb that have become increasingly popular over the last 20 years or so producing these lovely almost symmetrical balls of of purple pink red and white but mainly kind of purple purple mauve lilac shades of flowers in kind of late spring early summer filming this in june but just wanted to start off by showing you a huge kind of range of some of the colors and different um sizes of flower heads you can get um, through um, a quick slideshow of pictures so enjoy the next uh, minute uh, kind of to show you some of the allium varieties that are available here in the uk Right, well this is um, Allium Christophii, which for the last 10 years or so has been my favourite variety. I call it the firework um, Allium because it sort of explodes like a, like a mortar shell firework, um, full of colour. And uh, the bees absolutely love, that's one of the things about Alliums, is the bees and other pollinators love these flowers. Very open flower, easy for them to get into the centre of the, the plant where the pollen may be. And that's Christophii. Now these here were beautiful a month or so ago. This is probably one of the earliest flowering varieties of Allium, Purple Splendor, and uh, rich um, purple, maroony purple uh, flowers, uh, probably by the middle of May, something like that. These have now set seed, and although that's quite attractive, you could leave them there. The danger with that is that they can drop their seeds, and then you'll have lots of little Allium seedlings coming up, which may or may not be a problem. Um, I prefer to pull these out and allow the bulbs underneath to, to multiply so that we get a, a good, um, good strong clump. I think I start, this started off as three or maybe five bulbs and now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flower spikes this year. So they will, they will multiply given, given time. So the great thing with these is that you can just... I don't know if you heard that seagull laughing at me there. Thank you, Mr. Seagull. Um, so the great thing, as I was saying before, rudely interrupted, um, the great thing with these allium stems is that you can quite easily just give them a pull and up they come. And you can, um, you can keep these as a dried flower. You could put these in a vase and uh, make a lovely kind of dried flower arrangement out of those. You can spray them in kind of gold or silver or red, um, whatever color takes your fancy, and, and use it as a kind of a, uh, a Christmas uh, winter uh, dried flower decoration. They're rather lovely. Uh, so I'm going to pull the rest of these out. Oh, here they come. Just rest them against there for a minute. Oy. There you go, as easy as that, we've got a bunch of uh, dried flowers. So I'll go and hand them to my beloved and tell her I paid good money for them. <laughs> uh, and we'll see if we can make a nice arrangement out of those. So, um, different varieties of, of alliums, different shades and colors, um, many different varieties available. Um, let's just go through some of the benefits, the pluses, the good points of alliums. I can't think of many bad points. Um, one of the potentially bad points, actually, is um, is that sometimes the leaves can look a bit rough, can go a bit yellowy and, and brown looking. Um, in fact, on those alliums there that I just pulled up, the leaves had completely disappeared. I see this, actually, 
as um, an advantage because um, those leaves there will quickly die off. It's not like with, um, with daffodils and tulips where you have months and months where you're looking at kind of yellowing leaves. The leaves tend to die off quite quickly on, on alliums. So if that happens to yours in the first year or two particular, don't worry about that. It doesn't seem to harm the plant. They'll come back twice as strong every year. They're very hardy. Uh, you can, these stay outside all their lives uh, through the wettest, coldest winters. Um, they seem to do fine. They do like a well-drained soil. So this soil here actually underneath here is, is quite stony and well-drained. So if your soil is quite heavy and clay or wet, just incorporate some grit and some compost into the ground to help kind of um, get the water draining away. Um, but I find them very, very tolerant of all sorts of soil conditions. So um, not much of a problem with the leaves. Come back year after year, very hardy, very easy to grow. Um, loved by the bees, there's five uh, benefits there. Um, they look great when you're trying to contrast colours, so the purple and mauve look great against kind of silver, um, silver backgrounds. We've tried it against yellow there, which is quite nice, um, but uh, also very nice against green, green backgrounds. Um, alliums are actually, it's the family name for onions and garlic and shallots and chives, all part of the same family. And so that means that some of the, the predators that might live on some other bulbs, um, things like deer and rabbits, don't seem to go for them. I don't seem to get much problem with, um, with slugs either because there's that very strong taste to the um, oniony sort of taste to them. Uh, and because, and this just occurred to me actually, because allium in Latin actually means garlic, um, uh, maybe there's some sort of deterrent value here as well against uh, against vampires. Um, other vampire deterrents may also be available, of course. What's not to love about this plant? Have you grown some? Are you thinking about it? Can we help share your thoughts, your experiences, your ideas and your questions via our YouTube channel? Thank you.